Well, tonight we continue our coverage of the last rancher standing. We're talking about Cliven Bundy. He's in a standoff between the Bureau of Land Management there in Nevada. Now, Bundy's beef with federal land management officials started in 1993 when Bundy's allotment for grazing his cattle on public land was modified to include protections for the desert tortoise. 600,000 acres of land were preserved for these endangered species, which it turns out that the wildlife officials then began to euthanize because they started to take over the place. So the situation has really escalated in recent weeks. The federal agents are there. They've got snipers. Contract cowboys are restricting Bundy's access to the land as well as confiscating his cattle. We have reports of snipers training their weapons on the Bundy family. We've seen video showing canines attacking protesters, as well as Ammon Bundy, Cliven Bundy's son, was tasered. So the situation there has really evolved. We sent David Knight there to Nevada to bring us continued coverage. All right, David, good to see you. How, how are things going there on the ground in Nevada? Hi, Leanne. We just heard some speeches. They just had a kind of a press conference from Ammon Bundy, uh, one of the members of the Bundy family. There's going to be some politicians that are supposedly going to show up here later, but these were some people. We had someone from Oath Keepers speaking, and we just had this gentleman speaking. I wanted to get him on. Uh, his name is Harry Pappas, and he's been here for quite some time. He's seen how this has evolved over the desert tortoise and the bogus aspects of the way they're using this Endangered Species Act. And he has some really interesting comments about where this is all headed. I've seen some articles where people are being a little bit critical of, of Mr. Bundy there and saying you know, he doesn't have grazing rights and there's sort of an issue there. Can you explain a little bit of what's going on there with the, the grazing rights and the water rights? Yeah, you know, his family got here in the 1870s and they established that they had rights. They don't own the land. They've never said that they own the land. What they own are grazing rights and water rights. They improved it. It was the way the West was set up. And he has as much of a right to that as anybody has to a recorded deed on their property and their suburban home. And this is what they're using to get away from, to, to justify taking his rights, is the Endangered Species Act. And that's why I wanted uh, Mr. Pappas to talk about this. Mr. Pappas, you were saying that uh, you were there when this first got started. Tell us a little bit about what you saw at the very beginning and where you think this is going to be headed and the, the consequences uh, for just the general public, not even for ranchers. Well, I think it was about 20 years ago or so. I was on a, uh, a Southern Nevada BLM Advisory Council. It was a political position. I was appointed by a congresswoman at that time on that. Everybody on that thing was basically politically appointed. Uh, I served, I th believe, about a year on a committee. Uh, about six months into that, the California Department of Wildlife came in and gave us a, a, a lecture on tortoises in the uh, uh, Mojave desert area and it, they were conducting a study on the tortoise and it's just a general study and then what they did is they start finding huge huge piles of baby tortoises at these raven refs, um, roost sites all along the Mojave Desert and they came in these the BLM the California Department of Wildlife and they had two 55 gallon trash bags these big large 45 55 gallon Full. There must have been thousands of these tortoises. They looked just like this. I managed to get this one off them. They didn't want to give it to me. And what they were found with the ravens, along with other avarian uh, species, and that means bird, were just wiping the tortoises out. And they were fine. And because the uh, uh, the ravens take them back to their roast sites and eat them, they could find the evidence. But you got other predators out there also. You got coyotes, badgers that are eating these things up. But nevertheless, they had thousands of them. They told them this is what's, what's having the impact on these tortoises. Fast forward, about two, three years later, I was uh, involved on the tour. It was called, I forget the official name on it, but we all used to call it the tort group. It was a committee set up because the species, they were going to list the species as endangered, the tortoise. And this committee was involved with every, every government political entity in, the, in southern Nevada, maybe the entire state. There was uh, Nevada Department of Wildlife, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, BLM, Forest Service, National Park Service on there. It was composed of about 90, 95 percent government bureaucrats. And then there was a representative from a rancher, a rancher representative. I think there was a representative from off-roading. About 5 percent were general public. The endangered species got enacted, and their claim was 
that the tortoise do was being endangered by off-roading, hunting, shooting, camping, um, uh, cows, you name it, just about everything. So they wanted to close everything up. Uh, they got they got their plan in place, which was, I think, a $500 mitigation fee from the developers in southern Nevada to pay to the government agencies, and a portion of it went for uh, environmental studies and stuff like that on tortoise. Nevertheless, what ended up happening was, is after they put the plan in place, developers in southern Nevada, and that's what they wanted, really, they wanted this the big money, uh, had to pay the mitigation fee. It, but they had to do a study on their land to, remove, to find out if there were any tortoises. Well, all of a sudden, thousands of tortoises are being turned in to the agency in tar charge with this. I guess it was BLM. They had built a preserve, a tortoise preserve at the end of Rainbow. The preserve got full. It was overflowing with tortoises. Now, you got to understand something. Las Vegas Valley is the most one heavily impacted piece of desert in the western United States, damn, damn near. Since 1902, when Vegas got established, there's been nothing but development, road building, uh, home building, building offices, building buildings, building casinos, off-roading, shooting, target shooting, everything known to man has impacted that. Yet they were finding thousands of tortoises in that valley there. <laughs> And when they claimed, to, and by the way, they had claimed to get this tortoise in, uh, listed, it was an endangered species. It should have been rare as a dodo bird they were claiming. There wasn't any. That's why we had to enlist it. Nevertheless, after they started getting thousands of these things, I go to the meeting, a uh, uh, few meetings later, come there, and all of a sudden one of those government bureaucrats gets up and says, uh, I think it was uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, I believe it was, said, uh, we're going to start euthanizing the tortoises. Because we got too many of them. Well, somebody got them and said, what are you talking about too many of them? You weren't even supposed to have one. They were endangered. There wasn't any of them. How are you getting all these thousands? Uh, someone else got up and said, oh, uh, well, why don't you release them into the wild? You, now, these tortoises were coming out of the Vegas Valley, mind you. He said, why don't you release them into the wild? And then one of those government bureaucrats, one of these government agencies got up and said, uh, Oh, uh, we can't because the, uh, the, the, uh, that land is a carrying, tortoise carrying capacity. <laughs> well, how can it be a tortoise carrying capacity when it wasn't supposed to be any? So it was, you could see right off the bat, it was nothing but lies, 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 frauds, fraud, fraud. They got it all on. I got, had a belly full of the whole thing, and I left that committee, eventually left. And so I said, I think most uh, everyone else did except for the government bureaucrats. Nevertheless, I've always known this has been a, a total fraud. Now what they're doing, of course, they're using the species to remove Clive and Bundy here, these ranchers, and they're shutting down all these roads and sh uh, shutting down camping and everything else. And so what's going to be, what are they going to do in the future for people after they get the ranchers off? What, what's the general public going to have access to? That's it. See, the first thing they had to get off is the ranchers, because they've got some rights. They got the grazing rights, as you understand that. But, you know, uh, campers and off-roaders and all the rest of us just want to go out and explore and look at the outdoor. We don't have any real rights, according to the government. <laughs> so they had to get rid of the, uh, the ranchers first, and that's what they're doing. Once they get rid of them, then they'll put in their real agenda. Their real agenda is to turn the whole Gold Butte area into a national recreation area. And that'll shut down the majority. They'll shut down the majority of roads. They'll tell you where you can camp. They'll put a couple campsites. You'll go. You won't be allowed to use your firearms. They'll lock it up until you get it, get out by six. If you don't think they do it, look around everywhere they've done it. They've done it to Red Rock. They've done it to the Sheep Mountain Range. They've done it everywhere. And this now they want Gold Butte. And let me say this, which is very important. When they were trying, when they were trying to put Gold Butte into the national conservation area, they were talking how great pristine it was, how wild and wilderness and pristine. But now that they're trying to throw the rancher off the tent and saying he's got it all tore up. Well, which is it? <laughs> which is it? That when they want the rancher off, it's all tore up by his rancher and he's killed all the tortoises. Yet, Gold Butte, that they wanted in conservation over on that side of their mouth, they're saying it's all pristine and good. Yet, Clive and Bundy, that rancher's been running cows over in, in that area for 100 years. And he's only one ranch where there used to be about 53. Exactly. They've gotten them all. He's the last one. Once he gets them, then they take it, then they pick us all off. That's just amazing. Thank you so much for talking to us, Harry Pappas. That's right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, Leanne, that's uh, somebody who really knows the history of this. That's an important story to get out. People need to understand how the endangered species is being used here. And, of course, in California, they can't even get the 
Bureau of Land Management to file the reports that they're supposed to file. They're seven years behind in reports. And the environmentalists there who believe that there's a problem with desert tortoise in the California area can't even get the BLM to bother writing their reports. And yet they can send an army out here to shut down Clive and Bundy. Exactly. And, and we've seen that escalate over the last few days. What's the scene out there? Any federal agents showing up today? You know, since we've been here, the federal agents have made themselves as scarce as a desert tortoise. <laughs> and uh, everybody was saying just a couple of days ago, they had guys laying down up here pointing guns at this area, snipers. Uh, we haven't, uh, of course, tried to get off into uh, the Bureau of Land Management areas. I've been told that they have uh, all kinds of surveillance equipment. They'll swoop down on you and arrest you if you get into any of the area that they now claim exclusive access to. So we haven't seen any of them. However, uh, when I was at the Bundy Ranch earlier, I was um, uh, scheduling some interviews uh, for the next couple of days with the Bundy family. And uh, as I was there, one of their sons came in and they had just taken some pictures of some snipers. I don't know where the snipers were and I don't know where they were, but it was somewhere close to where their ranch was. Completely unbelievable. And it's supposedly over some desert tortoises. We all know it has nothing to do with that. It's clearly Agenda 21. It falls right into that zone that's going to be the heavily regulated, no human use zone. That's what's going on here. Well, you know, exactly. We understand the agenda behind this. We understand where it's going. But even if we didn't understand the agenda, even if somebody were just coming into this and never heard anything about Agenda 21, they never heard anything about the police brutality, the overreach of the federal government, it ought to give them cause to see hundreds of federal agents armed to the teeth to, quote unquote, protect some tortoises. They are totally out of balance, totally out of control, total overreach. That's what people need to wake up and see because... The general public doesn't understand that when we talk about the billions of bullets, when we talk about the uh, military vehicles that are being put in all these small town areas, they will use these things against the general public. We see this happening now with Clive and Bundy. He is the canary in the coal mine. It is not just ranchers. They're going to come for the farmers, and then they're going to come for the suburbanites, and then they're going to put, <laughs> they're going to come for everybody, basically. If he doesn't have any rights to grazing and to water, you don't have any rights to your private property. And of course, they're going to say you don't have any First Amendment rights, you don't have any Second Amendment rights, you name it. Well, you're absolutely right, David. This is a pivotal moment for us. It's time. This is the time for us to push back. This is our opportunity right now to really stand up for our rights and to support what you guys are doing out there. Thanks, David. Be careful. We'll okay, we will. Back. Bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, well, we'll continue to bring you coverage of the standoff there in Nevada. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the InfoWars Nightly News tonight, and we'll see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.